the Spartan Mind Strength Podcast, the podcast for mental grit and resilience. Hosted by V. Binga and Tim Ganley. Hello, this is Tim. And this is V. And we welcome you to another episode of the Spartan Mind Strength Podcast. And today we're going to talk about Black Moon Lilith in your anus. <laughs> Uranus. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we're back and we're going to talk about Black Moon Lilith, Lilith in Uranus. And Uranus. Oh, and Uranus. Okay, close enough. So, Uran <laughs> <laughs> so Black Moon... Lilith. Uh, Lilith is uh, was the first female, right? Yes. And she was in the Old Testament. And actually, there's a lot of, not a lot of information on her, but there's a lot of uh, folklore yes. about her. Like, she yeah. was one of the first Draculas. She was an evil this. She was a witch. She was, uh, I've even heard so much as she was Satan's wife type things. So, but that's not actually what Black Moon Lilith is at all, and let alone at what she is in astrology. Yes. So, what is she in astrology? Well, Black Moon Lilith in astrology actually has a lot of ambiguity, okay. <laughs> which fits the, the real story of uh, Lilith. So, first... Let's go over what Black Moon Lilith is in astrology in relation to astronomy. Good. Because, because I, I was going to ask that next, but go ahead. Because astrology, again, should be treated as a science because that's what it really is. The moon revolves around the Earth, uh -huh. right? At least that's what most people say. <laughs> yeah. So, and the moon has a, a really unique orbit around the earth. It's not a circle, it is not a perfect ellipse, but we can think of it as an ellipse okay. for the sake of simplicity. As an ellipse, you have two focal points. An ellipse is sort of like what? Uh, like an egg, egg? shape. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For the for the ellipse uh, confusion. <laughs> so a circle has a center, mm -hmm. right? So an ellipse cannot just have one center. An ellipse has two focal points. Okay. In uh, geometry, as the moon revolves around the Earth. If we assume that the orbit is a perfect ellipse, the Earth is the one focal point, and then the other focal point that we don't really know a, a lot about, we call it Black Moon. Okay, but that actually has a name for it in astronomy. It, it's the it's the it's the other focal point. Okay. Now the other interpretation. Of the of the black moon Lilith, in terms of astronomy, also is uh, that black moon is not that f exact focal point, but it is the place in the ellipse that the moon is the furthest away from the Earth. Okay. Okay. Now, where the magic happens, uh, astrologically, it doesn't really matter which one you consider as the black moon, because when you take it by degree on the zodiac, mm -hmm. it ends up being the same degree. Oh, cool. So, it doesn't really... Funny how that works. Exactly. Huh? Isn't that an amazing synchronicity, I would say? So... Whether you take the other focal point of the ellipse or the lunar apogee, which is the furthest away point mm -hmm. that the moon is from the Earth on the ellipse, astrologically you end up with the same degree. 
Okay, so that's so, what it is in astrology. If you look at it, uh, yep, and uh, astronomy. In ast astronom in astronomy and astrology together. Okay, but uh, Lilith. Uh huh. In astrology, or you right, astrology. Astrology, is yes. Basically, she is is considered what? So if you look at it, so if you go and analyze all the charts and everything and you look at what black moon statistically brings is <laughs> a lot of confusion right it's a lot astrologically black moon represents the shadows within us our deepest fears unconscious subconscious what we don't want to face okay because i know the moon itself is about the mind exactly is uh so the moon is about the mind yes so the black moon is about what we don't yeah. see or what we're not what we're trying not to think exactly, about exactly or... exactly if you look at the moon as our conscious mind our emotions, our thoughts, what we are aware of at any given moment. Black Moon, Lilith, is what we do not want to face and we either try to suppress it or we refuse to acknowledge it. it it's what we don't overall. see overall yeah, in overall. our mind. Yeah. Yes, overall. Yeah, nothing is absolute. Yeah, because uh, if you do face bl your your black moon, yes, you can actually do greatness because yeah. the black moon is uh, could be your fears, and if you face your fears, you get stronger. Exactly. So, would you consider the black moon more of being like the fear that you need to face, you need to deal yes, with in is, order? Yes, it is exactly the fear that if you face is gonna make you a better version of yourself okay. and, and that is that actually fits the north node and south node and all that that would be a different episode mm -hmm. but if you look at the, the orbit of the black moon on the zodiac on the chart and the orbit of the south node and the lunar node, when you look at all of this and you combine it and what they mean, that is exactly what Black Moon represents. Okay, so why? I know that uh, we just did one yesterday, two days ago, about what's happening Chiron, with Chiron, Chiron and in... the north node. Okay, yes. so why are we so quick to do one two days later? It's, uh, it's an emergency, actually. Okay, <laughs> so tell me why. So... We said that on, uh, on February 19, Chiron became conjunct really, really close to the North Node. And uh, that uh, lasts until early June. What happens also is uh, that Uranus <laughs> cre started creating a trine 120 degree angle, a very beautiful aspect with black moon on February 18th. And that also lasts until June, towards the end of June, about June 23rd. Why is that significant? We said that Chiron represents a well-rounded mind, mm -hmm. right? That represents the way we should be addressing the world at any given moment, mm -hmm. right? Chiron can survive in the city and in the woods. Yep. It's that well-rounded mind. And uh, Chiron, being really close to the North Node, says, hey, you, you need to be moving towards the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, because if you don't, the bad version of yourself can be coming. Exactly, exactly. Uranus trying the black moon. Uranus is something disruptive, mm -hmm. right? It's anything it, it's, because it's the sky, right? It, yeah, it's a, the sky is the limit. Mm -hmm. Uranus is I'm gonna break boundaries, right? The black moon are our 
our shadows, our fears. Uranus creating that trine with the black moon says if you want to start addressing your fears and use them to help you break boundaries, this is a perfect moment to do that. Okay. Right? Now, when we look at the world chart, right, the mundane, what it's called, mundane uh -huh. chart, black moon are the outliers of the society, okay. right? If moon, it, moon represents the people, and black moon represents the outliers. Of it's the people. Of the people. Like the people you... So you take for granted, and mm -hmm. you, they are just there. They are you just don't there. even pay attention to exactly, okay. exactly, right? And Uranus is represents a disruption, right? Something that breaks boundaries. Uranus trying Black Moon, you say, well, the outliers are starting to break boundaries, okay? Right now, also you have Mercury. And Mercury moves relatively quickly. So Mercury on February 18th, when uh, this trine started being formed of Uranus with a black moon, that's going to last until June, Mercury was forming a square with Uranus. It's a and that's a good thing that's for a challenging, oh, It's a challenging. challenging aspect. Something is there, is, there is a challenge there that needs to be addressed. Okay. Mercury, if you look at a, at a society uh, or at the world, Mercury represents, we've said the social media a lot uh -huh. of, represents movement, represents railroads, represents airplanes, represents... Truck drivers. The truck drivers, right? <laughs> and Mercury is forming a square with Uranus, which says, hey... You know, something could be coming from the truck drivers. Or the railroad. Or, or the railroad, or the um, uh, air travel, or Facebook, the social media, yep. or, you know. Any of those things. Any of those things. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's getting interesting. Very unique. Very unique, So yes. like what we said before, it's a, the best time right now to really be focused at what you're doing. Yeah and be aware of what you're hearing and really s make sure what you're hearing is matching what's actually happening. Exactly. Don't Verify. take things for granted. No, no. Verify and don't just have one uh, source of information. And with Black Lilith being where she is, you might not want to know what's happening, but you really have to find out what's happening because yes. no matter what's going on, it's a fear of yours, and it could be a fear of yours, and you got to break that fear. You have to find out. You have to stand up, be strong, and go after, go learn. Exactly. So what you said is extremely critical. You said uh, Black Moon Lilith means you may not want to know what's going on because you are afraid or disgusted or whatever with everything that seems to be going on. And also, Black Moon at the global level represents what is being hidden from us, mm -hmm. too. So it doesn't just represent the outliers of the society, it represents also What's what... What's hidden from us. Yep, what society doesn't want us to know. So there is so much going on with Black Moon that... that it makes it really critical for us to be staying focused and trying to figure out what is really happening. So today's message, well, the last message was stay focused. Yes. Today's message, don't be an ostrich. Don't stick your head in the ground. Look at what's happening. Study what's happening. Know what's happening for real. And then make decisions. But if you don't know what's really happening you are going to be taken over by your fears. Exactly, exactly. And also have a faith anytime you lose control, anytime you panic, have a faith that no matter what, 
God, God has a plan. Has a plan. Until next time, much, much love from both of us. Namaste kala. May we all be well. Focused. Adapt and thrive. Don't be an ostrich. If you found today's show helpful, please give us a rating, a review, or both. And subscribe to the podcast and never miss an episode. As always, namaste kala, which in Greek means... May we all be well. This program, Copyright True Fitness Incorporated, all rights reserved.